producer Mason looks like he's got a thought on his mind. You got anything stirring? Uh, there are people who all, all uh, protect their names, but there okay. are people, <clears throat> if you're looking, if you're doing research on moving to Texas, moving to the area on YouTube, mm -hmm. there are people who make videos about certain schools, right. certain school districts, and they're specific <laughs> about it. Yeah, I know where you're going here. And uh, most people just see that video and are like, oh, great, helpful information. You know, I'm really glad they, they told me what schools they would recommend. And they are under the banner of Realtor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we look at those videos and say, oh, that, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> and I think... <laughs> And I think some people don't really catch what that is yeah. or why a lot of people have asked us, hey, would you make a video on schools, on yeah. school districts? Tell me what school districts are good and what you would recommend. Yeah, we, we And why are, we, why are we reluctant to do that? And yeah. why do we look at those other channels, those other people that make videos about school districts? Why do we say, okay, well, that's, yeah, uh, there may be something wrong with that. Yeah, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but there, as a real, excuse me, as a real estate professional, there are boundaries uh, to what we can legally and ethically do. We, you know, we, it is, it is against license law to, you know, alarm someone deliberately so that they will sell their house, right? There's terminology uh, as you, as you're taking your real estate test, there are laws tied to that, right? Uh, there's laws in and around discrimination and there are laws uh, and ethical boundaries specific to education, right? So if someone were to say, something super racist or uh, discriminatory, I don't want my kid in school with, fill in the blank with something inappropriate, right? As a real estate professional, they can say that. It doesn't make it right, but they Your can client say, can a say client, that. a buyer yeah. or a seller can say, I don't want to yeah, yeah, buy yeah. over there where such and such lives. As a real estate professional, clearly we cannot say something like that or encourage or enable that. Now, again, a free citizen in the United States is allowed to think and feel and prefer whatever they think and feel and prefer. But as a real estate agent, we can't, you can't facilitate that or participate in that. So in a lot of ways, if somebody says, you know, wh which school has the best scores, we can say, here's a website that shows you school scores. But I, sometimes that situate that the, the data isn't as clear cut and I can't give you an opinion of that. And so, the question here is about these YouTube videos or even other, you know, audio platforms. What's what's wrong with saying, "Hey, I think this school is better than that school." So the, from a from a real estate, the short answer is whether you like it or not. That is within the code of ethics of of the real estate license okay. that you cannot do that. Um, sure. Whether it's a school, even a neighborhood, or a part of town, or a city council member, you know, it's just the, there there are guidelines there where we are here to facilitate what a client wants, but not give our opinion of preference over, you know, any protected class, of course, but also um, academic institution, things like that. Um, okay, but someone, some people disagree with that because they want say, some help. Someone yeah. moves here and they're like, I don't really know the area. You know the area. Right. So what do I, you know? So the, that's where, as a real estate professional, our goal is to provide resources where you can find the answers you're looking for okay. without us providing a personal opinion. I can say to you, here's a website that's got some fairly reliable um, scoring information, uh, demographic information, average, average income information. And obviously we can help you with, this is how far this is from that. And the things like that, this neighborhood is well known for this, but there are boundaries right now. Sometimes there are so many rules, so many laws and so many boundaries that someone might very much be, you know, accidentally crossing a line that that's life. Is but it, there are, there are others that I think are, are fairly knowingly just trying to create an advantage by violating some ethical boundaries. We're not okay, naming there's any names. The violation, there's a term, right? Is it fair housing? There's a bunch. Yeah. So fair housing has laws okay. and that's, that's again, I'm going to be very careful here on a public forum radio show, you know, setting up a bunch of scrutiny, which we, we're going to get anyway. But right. the point is there are fair housing laws around protected classes, right? You can't advertise a property specifically to, you know, one group of people over another or exclude a certain group of people and things like that. But there, there are also um, 
ethical boundaries from the licensing institution. Here in Texas, it would be the Texas Real Estate Commission. And then there are angles from the Texas Association of Realtors and the National Association of Realtors or the Collin County Association or Metro Texas Association. I mean, I think the consumer doesn't quite recognize or understand oftentimes that being a realtor is supposed to mean something. It is supposed to mean that you are a member of a trade association that has some licensing rules and some ethical rules and I Whose think fault is that? Tom? There are so <laughs> many members of the National Association that it's very difficult to maintain those standards. And sometimes the standards aren't even enough. So, you know, you'll hear me rolling my eyes from time to time about the, the associations because sometimes what they're trying to do is not happening. Sometimes what they say they're trying to do, they're not even putting forth much of an effort around. So look, I'm happy to pick on those big associations a little bit as well because I'd like them to do more. I'd like there to be a lot fewer real estate agents so that when you get one, you know that generally they're, they should be really good at what they do. That never works perfectly. There are bad doctors, bad attorneys, bad accountants, other areas where you have a professional license. But generally speaking, I think the, the general audience and consumer base thinks more highly on average of someone that's you know, passed the MCAT and, and, and achieved a full medical license or been to eight years of school or who's gotten a yeah. graduate degree in law school and passed the LSAT and yeah. passed the bar exam or who's got a master's in accounting and passed the CPA exam and has maintained that education. That's, that's, you're not wrong to think a real estate license is nowhere near that same level. It's what, I, what I was also getting at is, is that a lot of realtors, mm -hmm. I emphasize it because uh, my dad, uh, who is a realtor, used to say real la tour. And I started to call him D David. That's right. Instead of David. Addison. To add a syllable. Yeah. Uh, a lot of realtors. Such a great joke. Such classic, a great joke. Classic. A lot of realtors uh, violate these ethical boundaries. Right. And so people don't think they have them. Right. And, and let me just right. pause. That, that, well, that's, well, that's why right. it seems like. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's just playing fast and loose. Yeah, people don't really think about it. Oh, there's you know there's no boundary here because this guy did this. Well, blah, 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 blah. you bring up a good point. Let me let me make two quick points. Number one, there are boundaries, and I think the vast majority, like almost all, real estate agents are are well intentioned, right? I, I don't think there's a whole lot of like super shady agents out there. The problem is there's a They're bunch of there's a bunch no, of un, <laughs> there's a bunch of uninformed. They're not full time. They're not fully committed. They're not fully dedicated or educated or, you know, that kind of thing. They're well intentioned. They're, they're good folks trying, but they're not delivering an incredible product. Now, because of that, agents that are compliant to ethical boundaries and things like that oftentimes are ostracized. It's like I've bought and sold 20 houses. I've never had an agent tell me that they can't help me with that. You're like, well, you've never had an agent that obeyed the ethical boundaries. No one's ever asked me to sign that information about brokerage services document. Well, it's been required by the association for decades. It literally says at the top, this is required. But it's a lack of professionalism. That, yes, that's a great just summary phrase for the whole thing. There's a tremendous lack of professionalism in our industry. And part of that is because so many people are part-time or, you know, they're not fully committed. It's a backup job. It's a kind of default second career, you know, whatever. Because it was so, easy to get into in the first place. Exactly. I mean, low bar to entry, high, low barrier to entry, high barrier to success. Massive failure rate. But it's so easy to get turnover. into. As soon as people leave, other people replace them. There's, there's like, 50,000 plus people with a real estate license in North Texas right now. There's less than 500 of them that are doing what I think a lot of people assume most everybody's doing, which is making a great full-time living, helping a lot of people buy and sell houses. Average agent will do, you know, seven, eight, nine transactions this year. For, whereas a member of our team will do somewhere between 20 and 60. Say it louder for the back. Yeah. People in the back. For the folks in the back. The average agent in the state of Texas uh, in, over the last several years has averaged between eight and 10 transactions, almost all buyers and a handful of sellers. The average- Once eight, a One a month and they take a few months off. Yeah. And they're usually friends and kind of, you know, neighborhood type deals. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But the results show that the results of that financial and emotional and experience are-, are nowhere near what the average consumer wants or hopes or or is expecting. Um, and that doesn't mean someone who does more is better just because of that. But 
Oh, and how many do we are, do our agents? Yeah, so do? The agents Sorry. on our team will do somewhere between twenty and sixty. So you know, between three times and you know eight times the uh, the state average. So, so people doing twenty are the outliers essentially. Well, too. Yeah, and and the, and the the reason for that is the buy side of the business versus the sell side is different, right? So a buyer agent on our team can do you know, 20 to 30 and the sell side can do 40 to 60 uh, and typically do. And they've got a bunch of staff support and they there's training and connectedness and access to, you know, brokers and team leaders and things like that. So all, all that to say, um, education has been a massive piece of why so many people are moving locally, but also from out of state. If you go to our YouTube channel, uh, 